everyone welcome to a new video so today i'm doing a video that i did last year and i love doing so much and i think you guys enjoyed it too we are doing christmas dinners from around the world so we're going to start off today with greece now as i always say with these videos please 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 bear in mind that from family to family, there are obviously so many differences. I know that my friends, literally my friendship group of four of us, our Christmas dinners vary so much. So I have tried to research a variety of things so I can give like an overall gist of what their Christmas dinner looks like. Now, the one I'm actually doing first, which is Greece, literally varies from town to town so, so, so much. So I've picked a specific blog post which said this is what this person has for their Christmas dinner. So this is just one representation. But honestly, have a browse online. It's fascinating what the different Christmas dinners are around the world. Up first, we have Greece. In Greece, each different area has its own traditional Greek Christmas food. In northern parts, the Christmas dinner consists of comfort stews and soups, while in other areas, they serve roasted pork or beef, along with homemade rustic pies. We will be preparing three different elements, the pork, which can often be found in many Greek homes around the Christmas period. Then we also have the chicken lemon soup, which is what gets eaten after the Christmas Eve service. And another dish which gets consumed all around Greece is the stuffed cabbage. However, as mentioned previously, every part of Greece does it slightly differently, but obviously I can only do one meal. So this is Greek roasted pork loin with, and now I want to say it, but I feel like I'm going to say it wrong, petit mezzi, which is um, grape molasses. And I had to buy it online. I couldn't find it anywhere. So we're going to start off with the pork um, and it's going to get roasted in the oven with lots of different seasoning. This pork looks really flipping good. What we're going to do first is we're going to lay our lemon and orange and garlic and herbs in the base of a tray and already it's smelling absolutely delicious and then lots of rosemary it's got all of the base and then we need to pat our pork and cover it with some oil okay i have dried off my pork and i've popped it in there and now i'm making the greek molasses dressing thing so i need four tablespoons of the grape molasses i hope i've never even i've never even heard of it it kind of just smells a little bit like black treacle one, two, three, four. Okay, and now we're gonna go in with our mustard. Oh gosh, mustard really smells, doesn't it? Okay, give that a little mixy mix. Okay, now we get to work basically painting the um, molasses thing on the pork so it's all covered. Okay, now our pork element is done. We add three tablespoons of oil over all of the like fruit at the bottom i guess this is so that it doesn't burn and singe and then we also add half a cup of water to the bottom where the fruit is basically now what we do is we add the rest of the remaining glaze mixture in three 20 minute intervals um, and then cook it again for 20 minutes um in the oven okay now we're going to be doing one of the sides which are cabbage rolls now i have prepped everything I don't know if you can see, we have got the meat mixture down there. We've got the cabbage leaves, which you had to blanch. So they're like a bit soft. <clears throat> and then I have the pot, which is lined with the cabbage leaves that were too small to roll. So what I need to do is I need to add the meat to all of the herbs and the onions and the egg white. I'm going to be honest, I've never had anything like this before. So it's a new experience. A blanched cabbage leaf. Remove the vein, we add meat mixture to the bottom of the leaf and we basically just roll, you roll it up. Oh, I like this, I have no idea. I'm so curious what this would taste like. Well, that one's a bit, I think I've overfilled that one a little bit. But hey, what's a bit of overfilling between friends? We have had one little split right here. But now what we do is we cover them with a little bit of olive oil a little bit you've got to do a bit of salt and pep and then you cover with water so they're basically fully submerged place an inverted plate so they don't move around like that you cook them for an hour okay whilst that cooks away i'm going to be making this 
which is apparently often consumed beforehand or it's consumed some point in the festive period. So it's a Greek lemon chicken soup. Um, so I'm just gonna start prepping all the bits and bobs. So we have all of the veg and the garlic and now we add the stock and the bay leaf. Although I have to say, I do always feel like, do bay leaves actually do anything? My mum always said it and now I've cottoned on to it and I feel like whenever you add them to things, but they don't actually, oh, maybe, I might be wrong. <laughs> also, this chicken vegetable broth looks weird, but we have to go for some broth in here. And this was the only one they had in the store, so. <gasps> I just put my nail back. Now we leave this for 20 minutes. Okay, our creamy sauce is all done. Okay, our soup is nearly ready, but this is the key part. We have to make our sauce. So in here we have the lemon and we're going to quickly whisk in the eggs but with that we then have to also add our soup to temper the eggs. So this is all a bit go 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 but I believe in us, I believe we can do it. Continue to whisk, apparently this is what makes it lovely and silky. Oh it smells good, oh I feel like this could become a fan favourite in the booth household. This is what it looks like. I hope I've done everyone justice. Okay, it says to garnish it with parsley. Oh, it's good. Mm, very yummy. Oh, that, that feels like it's doing you good, doesn't it? It needs the parsley to cut through the lemon. Mm. Right, the pork is under there resting and now we make the sauce. So we need to get rid of all the oranges and stuff. It smells incredible. And then we basically make like a little gravy with some stock that and then the grape molasses as well. Okay, this is what the pork is looking like. And then under here we have our cabbage. And there we go. Pork, I'm feeling very confident about the pork actually. You can really taste the flavor. Wow, so zesty. So true, lemon in everything. I can't say I would be running back to it? the cabbage. It's a little tasteless. Mm, pork is good. Okay, if we're being honest, I really enjoyed the pork. The pork was really flavoursome, wasn't it? On point. It was delicious, actually. And we don't... The cabbage, I don't know if I've done it wrong, maybe. Maybe if it was cooked for us, it would be a different situation. But I can't say I'm running back to have that. What are you thinking about the soup? I like it. It's hearty, warm, filling. And there's a... I, can't, I don't know what the taste is, but I know there's a... Lemon. Ah, yeah. I like that soury... I like that in there. Yes, lemon chicken mm. Greek soup. Mm. Lush, isn't it? Top marks, better than yesterday's. What are you saying about the cabbage? I don't know where your mouth is. <laughs> Which is very surprising. <laughs> is it good? Yeah, I like the cabbage. Really? Yeah. How do you feel about the pork? Lovely. I like the whole thing. Oh, interesting. There we go. In Finland, yet again, there was a lot of variation between the different dishes that get consumed. You can have oven-baked ham, root vegetable casseroles, mixed beetroot salad, liver casserole, pâtés, meats, gravlax, smoked salmon, fish roe, herring. There are lots of different things that form the basis of the traditional Finnish Christmas dinner. However, I found an article where the Finnish people could vote for their favourite Christmas dishes, and the two that won were the baked ham with prunes and swede casserole, so I thought I would give those two most popular items a go. I am currently making today's Christmas dinner, which is Finnish. Now, I already made the gammon and that's in the oven. We're making the gratin right now, which is like a Swede gratin. And it smells incredible because we have all the like onion and the, the herbs and cooking up in butter. And we are about to make a cheesy sauce. I feel like this is gonna be absolutely delicious. Right, we are thickening our little saucy sauce. I just added the cheese, so that is all melting in there, and then we're going to combine it in here. Okay, and now it goes into the oven to cook. Now, obviously, I've got the gratin in the oven, but I also found finished stewed potatoes, which this is the recipe right here, um, and you basically boil the potatoes in the cream. Um, so I'm going to do those as well, or it says boiled potatoes, but I feel like this is fun because it's a new recipe, something I've never tried before. Okay, I've done the stewed potatoes, but I think I might have mashed them a little bit too hard. 
but they are so nice and creamy and they just literally like slip down the neck. I don't know why I've never done potatoes like that before. So shout out Finnish stew potatoes. Would recommend cooking your potatoes like that. Really, and also, I feel like it's a lot less fash, fash? Faff than mashed potato. Wow, look at the gratin! I just cut up the gammon. It was quite hard to cut because all the prunes and stuff kept falling out. But I am now about to dish up. Okay, here we have it. We have the stewed potato, the swede gratin, the gammon, and the peas. Let's give this a try. Now, I have to say, the thing that I'm most intrigued about is the gammon because it has obviously got the prunes and stuff in it. So I thought it would taste a bit more fruity. <laughs> from the apples and the prunes, but it doesn't. Okay, that's fine. Let's try the Swede gratin. The cheesy sauce is really good. And obviously I've already established that I love the steamed potatoes, so the steamed potatoes are good. The more I eat the Swede gratin, the more I love it. Mm. I think the, the Swede works well with the saltiness of the gammon. I feel like they pair really well together. Dad, I thought, would hate this because it's sweet and the man doesn't like sweet or sweet potato. No. But what did you just say? It's probably the best sweet I've ever had. Watch. Sweet. Normally it's, it almost makes me gag, you know, when you don't like something. It's yeah. like, mm. You won't be trotting back no, it's to have it. Actually, it doesn't have, it doesn't have that, what I refer to as, for me, that kind of strong sweet root flavour that I don't like. Really? Mm. Probably because it's masked in cheese. And onions. <laughs> yeah, true. And yeah, I did I did sweat those you're onions. Not, you're nicely. not loving it, Hat Banks. <laughs> She's like, I want some sweet Greta, please. Where is she looking at? As much as he said he liked the sweet. Yeah, I want I'm not going overboard. <laughs> Next up, we have the Polish Christmas dinner. In Poland, the Christmas Eve dinner is one of the most important celebrations of the year. It usually consists of 12 different dishes and meat is not allowed to be consumed. Obviously, it is just my mum, dad and I at home, so we couldn't complete 12 dishes. So I thought I would do a sample of some of the recipes I found. However, some other iconic Polish Christmas dishes include borscht, which is the beetroot soup, mushroom soup, carp, potato salad, herring, to name a few. Okay, one of the chosen elements of tonight's one is the starting off will be Polish Greek starfish, ryba po greku. Um, and this one we're going to start off by you have to heat the oil and add spices. And it's kind of like nothing I've ever had before. Whilst that is sweating off and cooking, I'm gonna make my Polish potato salad. So I've got my potatoes that I cooked. Um, and then we add all the bits and bobs. So we've got some apple going in, and something which I never would have put in a potato salad, but I can see really working. Gherkin schmirkin. Yes, I'm all for this. I think this would just elevate, you know, like the, the tartness contrast with the, with the mayonnaise. Now, this is like the Brazilian one where they add eggs as well. And we've also got some mustard and some mayo. So that is all going to be going on in our potato salad. So this is what the little veggie stew bit looks like. And then you layer that with the fish. Okie doke, this is what it looks like. Now, obviously normally that would be cod, but we can't find cod. So it'd be the cod and the potato salad. But we shook it up, we've got to adapt and overcome. So we've got the Polish carrot and fish stew thing, potato salad and some sauerkraut. So let's give the fish and the carrot the go first. Are you ready? Those spices are kind of fun in it. And then do we eat the potato salad like on the side or do we mix it with the fish? I'm gonna try the potato salad though. I like the pickles in it. I feel like it goes really well with the fish actually because of the like mayo you know, like tart, it kind of tastes like tartar sauce. Now we try the sauerkraut. I haven't tried this since last year's meal, so let's give it a go. It is zingy, whoa, that has got a punch. Now for Australia's Christmas dinner, I actually reached out to one of my friends who lives over there. She said it can really divide the family as some of her older relatives really like the traditional roast that 
traditionally English people would have, whereas her younger relatives like to have the cold meats with the picky bits and some others just want a plain old barbecue. So I went with a mixture and I found a few recipes online with some popular Australian salad recipes and we're going to go for this. Hello and welcome to day, another day. We're doing Australia today. Now Australia is a mixed, mixed board. So again, I've done a variety of uh, dishes. So we're doing the classic barbecue and some salads. Um, the first one I'm starting off with is this mango chili salad, which um, was recommended to me a lot, a lot. Poor dad has to go outside to do the barbecue. Because it's not Australian weather here, is it? No, it's freezing and dark. I'm actually making this cashew broccoli bacon salad first. Um, because it needs time to cool before you eat it. He's got his head torch on doing the barbecue. So I'm making this little mango salad, which is looking good. It's got some sugar snap peas, some mint, some mango. And here's our little dressing going on. I think I might have, oh yeah, baby. This smells so lovely and fragrant. How are you feeling? <laughs> good. He's got the football on. Sorry, but how muggy that he didn't correct me when it's quite clearly rugby. And he didn't correct me that it wasn't football. He's got a head sort. Did I hear the... Okay. Oh, it's Australia! Yeah. Is that fitting? And then we've got, we've got in here, we've got the prawny prawns, the sausages and the burgers. It is go time, boys and girls. Yes, get that on there. It feels so weird, doesn't it? But nice. Mm. Doesn't it feel nice? Beautiful. Right, so the gist is, lots of salads, meats, We've done the prawny prawns on the BBQ prawn mayo lettuce mm. boats. Um, we slightly burnt this uh, roll, but it's okay. A little hot dog. Good day. <laughs> what did we think of all of our salads and bits and bobs? Lovely. Normal kind of barbecue for us, isn't it? Yeah, this is a normal kind of barbecue. Salads are on point. Mm. The one thing though, that's though, not yeah. the same prawns. is the weather. And the weather, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, but this, for me, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. this broccoli situation. <laughs> that was really good. And I this don't is like, really good. I, I didn't love the mango one, oh, but we did. So nice. Chloe did. Yeah. Um, did. But how would you feel having this on Christmas Day? No. Yeah. <coughs> oh no. Actually <coughs> no. Yeah, it would feel very wrong, wouldn't it? If I was on a beach and it was boiling hot, perhaps. But that's the problem here in England. It's not. No beaches. Well, beaches, but not hot beaches. Silly beach. I love this. I'd make that again. And I like that. I'd have it without the bacon, I think. No, it needs, no, it needs the bacon. Bacon, it needs the salt. And it needs everything, doesn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Just take the broccoli out. It's really nice. Sounds sad. I'm surprised you ate it, Chloe, because it had raisins in. Yeah, it did. Take the raisins <laughs> out. I understood. I knew that was going to happen from yeah, me. I just couldn't. It's all wrong. Couldn't bring yourself. How do you feel about raisins in a coronation chicken? No, I hate it. It's that is coronation cool. chicken. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Next up, we are going to be doing Portugal. Now, for Portugal, it's actually Christmas Eve that is like their very iconic uh, meal that they have. And they normally have salted cod and veg and potatoes. But apparently, there's this really nice meal that you can have that like jazzes up the salted cod. Now, salted cod was really hard to come by in England. I had to order it off a special website and everything. But we got it. And let's crack on with Portugal's Christmas dinner. Apologies for being on my phone, but my cameras are all playing up. So. For tonight, for the last meal, it's going to have to be on the phone camera. But we are doing Portugal tonight and we are having to use salted cod. Basically every recipe use salted cod. So I had to find online a special fish supplier that had salted cod. We have got it here and it has been boiling away. Can you see it? It looks really fancy. And it's got parsley, olives, onion. We've had to caramelize some olives. We've had to boil some eggies. We've got the potato. It's all happening. Okay, so what you do is you have your olives. We've already got some olives in there. Um, and then you layer the potato uh, and the fish. So you do it in little layers um, with the melted butter. So it's quite a simple dish actually, but it just has to have lots of um, proper fresh ingredients. Oh, and you have to layer it with the parsley. Okay, this is what it looks like before the oven and it's got the little caramelised onion, the butter, the parsley, the potato and the fish. I'm getting the plates all ready. It says to serve it with a lemon and a hard boiled egg. She is done. Okay, this is what it looks like. We've got the, I've had quite a few mouthfuls now and I really like it. 
It's quite fresh. The lemon is definitely needed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It all ties together. I think I possibly would rather even more parsley to it. It kind of is a bit fish pie-y. Mm. A little bit. But I think I prefer it because it's not super creamy. Mm. It's crispy. Mm. It's a shame you haven't got, for each of your recipes you've done, a uh, person from that nation eating it. To give see you, how proper it to, is. To, to give you the lowdown. Mm. I mean, it's very flavoursome cod, but it... I don't taste any different because it's mm. salted cod. Delicious. We think this might be our favourite of all five days. Mm -hmm. Did like the Australian one. Ash, I did like Poland's. That fish carrot thing it was mm. really good. It was quite nice. We had a good time. And that is the end of another five days of Christmas dinners with Grac. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any Christmas videos you do want to see from me, let me know because there's only one month to go, people. One month. What the actual heck?